hold, uh, well, we're trying to hold events like this because we don't charge for our services, so we don't, uh, going into people's homes to help them, we don't charge them, we don't ask them for money, we don't hint at it. Some do donate, others don't. Uh, I don't think any less of anybody that doesn't donate. Um, so we try to hold events like this where people get a benefit by, uh, firstly, in this case, the protection workshop to start with, and then, uh, secondly, investigating a wonderful location like, uh, like Bogo Road Jail. Um, everything we're doing here tonight is going to be done with complete respect as well um, for, uh, for not only the jail but the unseen residents and those still living in the community that are either incarcerated here, worked here or their families. So um, it's, uh, it's going to be a very respectful uh, investigation. This is our cable and it's going to run back to base, in, um, the base station here. You don't worry about the yellow cable, oh sorry, you don't worry about the red cable. The yellow cable will just attach straight to this, okay? And we'll run all our cabling out. It'll run straight back to the base station and that will still be live. We can be able to sit there and watch it all live as it's been filmed. Needs to, the positioning's okay, it just needs to tilt camera left. Yep. What do you think of uh, Bogo uh, Road Jail compared to other places you've done volunteering? Do you prefer private residence or do you prefer coming somewhere like this? Is I've done a lot of private. I'd rather. I'd like to do some historic sites mm -hmm. just because there might be something sort of interesting there. Um, but I like the historical value of it as well. So I think these are good if we get the opportunity to do more of these. Um, obviously you need a bigger team and a lot more time, but yeah, I'd rather do these. And maybe a bigger city since we seem to be demolishing all of our historic sites. We do, there's not many left, so, um, but there are some other sites we're trying to get access to as well, if oh, we can. So. Like, like, um, which ones? We don't know yet, we've got a few in mind, but until we can talk to the people and they say it, we're just not sure. But anything that's left, that's open, we'd like to try and get access to, so. Wonderful, thank you. Okay. The cameras out there, I need to cover that open area out there, so we're just going to open them out to try and cover that whole area as much as possible. They have seen 
spirits and other things out there, or some of the prison guards have seen them out there. Hi, so Terry, what's the most memorable ghost hunt you've actually been on with the Dust Team? Uh, most memorable would be a ghost hunt we did down the Gold Coast. There was a, a young man who played with a Ouija board and called spirits to himself, and that place was just a, a, a hive of activity. Quite a lot happened that night. And, uh, so poltergeist activity? Yes, it was. Wow. And uh, I was sitting in the room, it was myself and, and one, one other member, and there was a, a big metallic knock on a, on a metal bed. Uh, we could we could not put that down to anything else but activity. It was it was very loud and the energy in the room was amazing. Mm -hmm. And is this the first time you're at Boggo Road, or have you been here before? We've done a a team investigation one one night prior to this, and I've actually done the tour. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this will be the first proper investigation that I've done here. Wonderful. Thank you very much. No problem. So Rhonda, tell us what happened in Block E at your last visit here. I was standing in this corner, another woman was standing in that corner, halfway down was another person. There was a person in each like, section of the cell and it was pitch black. Garav had his um, machines going, there was lots of talking and swearing and all of a sudden I saw this big black mess come out of that far right hand corner and move out halfway between that big window and the wall mm. and then it went back. It did that twice and then I walked over to that lady in case the person in the middle here had stepped out. Oh yeah? But mm. she said to me, did you see that? And I said, did this woman move? And she said, no. Whoa. <laughs> so I came back to the corner. Garav was walking around the perimeter here and the whole black mass came out and covered the window. Cool. And what did you do then? Leave very quickly? No. no. You st <laughs> stayed till the end? I probably would have liked it. <laughs> no. no. I'm down this end, it's down that end. <laughs> <laughs> so if it had got closer, would you then have taken no. off? Or? So you're very brave. Or well, you what just... can it do? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it can't hurt me. Okay, you're very brave. Thank you. Thank you. So Henry, tell me about Ernest Austin. Ernest Austin, he was a um, murderer. He, um, he was a farm hand at one of the farms in South Brisbane. And one day he um, lured the farm hand, or the farmer's daughter, into the bush. Um, and they found her, I think, the next day. Huh. But apparently, before that, he was always seen picking flowers and that with her. So, um, yeah, so this is still where he lived. Um, he was only my age when they hung him. Mm. And apparently, when they went to hang him, Back in uh, 1913, he was laughing like a maniac to the gallows until they dropped him. So they, he obviously killed her and murdered her? Yes. Okay. That's a very sad story. It is. Um, and even in South Australia, he was done for attempted rape, mm. then transferred up to Queensland. Was he a resident of Queensland originally? Is that why uh, they... No, changed? South Australia. Then he came up here, stopped in New South Wales for a month, then up here to get a job on a farm. On, so wherever the murder occurred, yes. that's where he was tried? Yeah. it's about a kilometre away from the farm where the girl was found. Oh. Well, thank you for that, thank you. thank you very much.